In this screencast, we will discuss how to manage pneumothorax when detected on chest radiographs and how to use chest radiographs in the management of pneumothorax. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to recognize the findings of pneumothorax and explain how and when to use chest radiographs to evaluate for pneumothorax. Pneumothorax can be detected in a wide range of scenarios, but is most commonly iatrogenic. And we often will assess for pneumothorax in patients who have had high risk procedures that can result in pneumothorax. We do also see pneumothorax in the setting of trauma, particularly associated with rib fractures. And in a small number of cases, we see spontaneous pneumothorax either primary spontaneous pneumothorax or spontaneous pneumothorax secondary to underlying lung pathology, such as blebs or emphysema. After a high-risk iatrogenic procedure, you will often obtain an upright chest radiograph to assess for the presence of a pneumothorax. The upright chest radiograph is essential to increase the sensitivity for a pneumothorax. Gas, here represented by white, with the gray being the lung. In an upright chest radiograph, the gas helps outline and separate the lung apex from the chest wall, creating a pleural line and a lucency with absent lung markings, giving a high specificity for pneumothorax. If we blow up this particular patient, we can see the pneumothorax as indicated by this pleural line that extends across multiple ribs and rib interspaces. And we can see the lucency with absent lung markings. This yellow line again highlights that pleural line. And if we look, the yellow arrows show the pleural line in the rib interspaces and the blue arrows show the pleural line crossing the ribs. Realize that a supine or partial upright radiograph is suboptimal. The gas can settle in the anterior chest wall, and when the radiograph is shot AP, we may not be able to detect the gas because there is no separation of the pleural surfaces in plane with the radiographs. So small pneumothoraces may settle anteriorly and may not be detected on supine or partial upright radiographs. Let's now look at a complicated case. Here is a 19 year old man who's presenting to the emergency department with chest pain and acute shortness of breath. Take a moment to look at this radiograph and see if you can make the key findings. In the right hemithorax, we can see a pleural line. This is the lung, which is partially collapsed. This is the pleural line. And here we see a large amount of gas creating a lucency with absent lung markings. We do not yet have widening of the rib interspaces or inversion of the diaphragms or mediastinal shift to, cons to raise concern for tension pneumothorax, but the size of this pneumothorax does warrant urgent or emergent treatment. This patient was given a pigtail thoracostomy catheter and a repeat chest radiograph was obtained. We can see after placement of the pigtail thoracostomy catheter that the pneumothorax has actually worsened. We now have complete collapse of the lung. We have some degree of mediastinal shift. We do not yet see widening of the rib interspaces or inversion of the diaphragm, but these findings are concerning for tension pneumothorax and they need to be addressed urgently or emergently. The first thing you can do is assess for appropriate positioning of the catheter, and this does appear to be terminating within the pleural space. Look for any kinks or discontinuities in the catheter, which we don't see. And then the chest tube system needs to be evaluated 
for the presence of any leaks or any disconnections. A leak was found in the chest tube system and after the patient was placed on appropriate suction, a repeat chest radiograph showed marked improvement of the pneumothorax. In this case, it's very difficult to see, but there is maybe a little residual pneumothorax, but it's substantially smaller than it was prior to treatment with the chest tube. Notice that this is a semi-upright radiograph, and this may underestimate the size of the pneumothorax. The patient has also developed an airspace opacity here, which could be related to re-expansion pulmonary edema or residual atelectasis. Because of the patient's persistent shortness of breath, despite near complete resolution of the pneumothorax, a chest CT was obtained. And in this case, you can see a moderate sized residual pneumothorax. Note that this pneumothorax, this is a sagittal image through the right hemithorax, and most of the pneumothorax is in the anterior chest. We don't have much separation of the lung apex from the chest wall. And so when we shoot an AP semi-upright chest radiograph, there appears to be lung almost all the way up to the top of the hemithorax, and there is lung that appears to extend all the way to the diaphragm, which can cause us to underestimate the degree of the pneumothorax and highlights the importance of true upright radiographs. In this case, apical blebs were detected at CT and were thought to account for the patient's persistent pneumothorax despite chest tube placement. Thoracic surgery was consulted and the patient underwent a wedge resection of the apical blebs with large bore chest tube placement resulting in resolution of the pneumothorax. Let's look at another complicated case. Here we have a 58 year old man who recently underwent coronary artery bypass grafting with a median sternotomy. On his initial chest radiograph immediately post-op, we don't really detect a large pneumothorax, but there is suggestion of a small pneumothorax in the right lung apex. Because there was a pneumothorax, four hours later, a repeat chest radiograph was obtained. This repeat chest radiograph now shows a large pneumothorax. You can see the lung is increased in density, indicating partial collapse. We can see the pleural line. We see the lucency with absent lung markings. So this is a large pneumothorax that developed in just four hours. In this case, a chest tube indicated and a pigtail catheter was placed in the lower right hemithorax. Again, we see a small residual pneumothorax in the right apex, but that is something that we can manage conservatively. Again, zoom in just to show you that subtle, small pneumothorax in that right apex. Takeaway points. If there's a tension pneumothorax, consider emergent decompression. Traditionally with a needle thoracostomy in the midclavicular line, but commonly with chest tube placement. Upright chest radiographs are almost always indicated after a high risk intrathoracic procedure. And you should consider getting an upright chest radiograph after making changes to your chest tube settings or after placing or removing a chest tube. If you have a persistent pneumothorax, you should check your chest tube system for a leak or a kink. You should consider returning the chest tube to suction if it was on water seal. And if there's still a persistent leak, despite appropriate chest tube management, you should consider bronchopleural fistula in your differential diagnosis and consider consulting thoracic surgery.